Hello fam, welcome back to my channel. Thank you all for clicking on the link to watch this video. Thanks to everyone who has subscribed to my channel. If today is your first time watching my video, don't forget to click on the subscription button to subscribe to my channel. Also, don't forget to click on the notification button so that anytime I upload a new video, you'll receive a notification about it. So once again, I'm back with all your tips for grad school. And I promise to be sharing tips regarding fellowships, grants, and other um, scholarships, and not like limiting myself to just graduate publication. So today I'll be sharing um, some tips regarding the World Bank Africa Fellowship. And I have a special guest with me who is a former fellow, so he'll be sharing all the tips with us. The deadline for this fellowship is 10 to 6, I guess, but it's not too late. If you still have interest, you can definitely um, give it a try. And for those of you who have already started the process, maybe through this interview, you can learn some one or two tips um, to help fix um, some of the mistakes you might probably have um, made in um, your application package. So my guest here is Dr. Pori Bala, him to introduce um so yeah all right thank you very much Bariku. So for having me my name is eric ofori uh she said i'm from ghana and i've been in the united states for seven years it's my seventh year in the united states so i moved from ghana after my undergraduate studies and then i did a master's program in mississippi state and then i did uh, my phd that's a master's program in mississippi state and then i did a phd in kansas state university so that's a little bit about myself yeah that's great so um which okay i think you mentioned where you attended and the program you read did you mention your program yeah i studied agricultural economics yes yeah. so in um i studied agricultural economics in ghana and uh, for my undergraduate degree the same in mississippi state and then in kansas state as well so yeah great so um dr Fori, um what's the world bank fellowship about I mean, if you go onto the website, you probably get a good, a better description than I will, I will say. Uh, but I think basically the idea is to, um, you know, you know, be able to bring that, bring the best um, talents, you know, in terms of like, you know, the best talents from Africa to and to groom them, right? To 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 groom them to to be able to. Um, support their World Bank's activities, you know, it's their research and operations in the countries in which they, they, they work or they operate. So um, this fellowship program is just to um, create capacity, you know, amongst um, Africans, you know, to, to help them to be able to support the World Bank and to, to also learn so that they can, you know, do other things as well, you know, and be able to work in other organizations. Basically, it's a capacity building program. That's how I see it. That's great. So is it only limited to African schooling in the U.S.? No, it's not limited to African school in the U.S. Honestly, I think they will, um, they are actively seeking people even outside of the, the United States. As long as you're an African um, from Sub-Saharan Africa, I think so. Um, I think that's what the description says online. Um, it doesn't matter which, where you are. I think in my cohort, we have people from from Africa. At least I know some, there was somebody from South Africa that was in our group. I know there were so many people who were in Europe going to school in, the, in Europe who were selected as well. So um, it doesn't, you don't have to be in the United States. Great. So you heard um, Dr. Fori, you don't have to be in the United States. So wherever you are, if you qualify and you are from Sub-Saharan Africa, you can definitely um, give it a try. So how did you hear about the fellowship? I mean, it was something I've I've always known about I've been seeing on social media, people posting on Twitter, stuff like that. Yep. So I think I probably saw it somewhere on social media. Yeah. And did you get it on your first try? Yeah. So I've I've always known the program existed, but I never applied till I was ready to apply. And the first time I applied is when I, I got into the program. Yeah. Great. And what are some of the benefits of the fellowship, like during and after the fellowship? I feel it's, it's a very good um, experience, especially for um, young Africans uh, who might not um, usually get such opportunities. You know, um, this fellowship program is good because it will, it will help you to gain some experience. Um, it will help you to be able to understand um, the works of the World Bank, which is a, a, a big international development organization. And there are similar development organizations all around the world. So it's it's a good program to to help you develop your research and operation skills um 
and it, it, it will definitely open some doors for you apart from meeting people in the world bank i mean the skills that you you acquire will be able to help you to i mean you know get other jobs elsewhere or be useful elsewhere as well so yeah that's great to hear and does it come with the pay yeah um yeah you get a stipend a reasonable stipend yeah so so what are some of the requirements i know definitely like people would see it online but if you would like to touch on some of like the important ones um okay so i think you should be um 32 or below you should have good analytical skills you should have you should be a phd in your last year of graduating that's one of the reasons why i never applied right because you have to be in your last year of graduating um or like at least a phd candidate close to graduating right so uh and um yeah you should have you should be able to speak english if you're able to speak other languages too that's a good that's an advantage so basically be under the age of 32 um, be from sub-saharan africa you know um be a phd student i know they also take master students mba students because there's a part of the world bank group that's ifc that they do more like finance stuff type of work so i i know they will probably also take like um, mba students i saw um I'm going to add on, on um, I think, LinkedIn or something recently, I think last week, that they are trying to actively recruit um, people into IFC, which is a branch of the World Bank Group, people with MBAs as well. So um, you might want to look into that and uh, apply if you're an MBA student as well. Great. And with this particular fellowship, is it like for every course? Because I, I realized from my experience that most of the people that like get it are people with a comms background. So since you work with them, do you know people with other um, field or like with other backgrounds that also got into this fellowship? Yeah, um, yeah, I think that, I mean, yeah, predominantly um, it will be people with econ degrees, right? So like energy economics, agriculture economics, financial economics, or the development economics. But like I've seen uh, there were some people from civil engineering or somebody from civil engineering. My group, if, I, if I'm right, there was even a, doc, a medical doctor who was doing an MPH. Um, there was, um, yeah, they, they, like that help people, you know, they are different. You don't have to be an economist. Like, this is why I say when it comes to stuff like this, first of all, and, and that's one tip, your your goals, right? And your goals must align with the World Bank Group. Or like maybe the research you are doing must align with what the World Bank Group is doing, right? And that's one way for you to be able to get into the program, right? So if the World Bank Group has a, um, an aim it has an objective as an organization right so if if the things you are doing or if your research doesn't align with what they are doing then you are less likely to be um you know selected into the program um it doesn't it doesn't matter your course right so if you are doing civil engineering and and maybe they are and maybe your research or what you have to offer or how you present your your if you have to write i don't know if you have to write a letter or something. You have to write a statement of purpose. If your statement of purpose um, portrays the fact that um, you are doing research that is of interest to the World Bank group, then you are more likely to be selected than somebody who is doing economics but you know has, doesn't have any research that aligns with um, the, the objectives of the World Bank group. So, Thank you. That's um, a good one. So it's more about how your research aligns with like whatever the World Bank is doing so what are some of the things you did like as you prepared to apply to increase your chances of being selected because you said you already like saw it before you even became a candidate probably so maybe you were preparing yourself towards applying for that particular fellowship so what are some of the things you did yeah um so yeah um i i just i mean it I, it wasn't something I was expecting. Like I wasn't like targeting it. It just happened, right? So um, I my research was kind of and and this is this is very interesting because my int my research was based in the in the US, right? So but I was doing things that were applicable to the to to the international world or the development developing countries. So um, but my research was focused in the, in the US. So what happened was that. I applied for something called um, the, the World Bank has this job market candidate um, program and thing they do. So I submitted to that um, to that particular um, World Bank uh, whatever job market candidate thing they were doing, and um, 
so every year they they ask for people to bring their job market papers and um once i submitted that i it was a way for me to like you know get to get to meet people even though i wasn't i wasn't finally sele selected because they told me that um um my my research did not meet the scope because it was it was not focused on developing and on developing countries that was for, a way for me to you know get exposed to people in the world bank group right i'm not saying that's why i got into the program but i'm just saying you have to put yourself out there if you if you're interested in things like this so first of all your research has to align if it doesn't align you don't have to force it right it's you're you're, you're probably doing research that you're very much interested in so if it doesn't align with the world bank's um um goals or objectives you don't have to force it um so yeah, basically put yourself out there. I I used to apply for other things like other you know sh I think they have short term consultancy jobs, um, in the World Bank group. I used to apply for those as well. So I mean, basically for me, I would say put yourself out there as much as you can. You never know who will see your work, and, and probably this that's one of the things you know I'll I'll give the one of the advice I'll give to my old self is that you have to put yourself out there as much as you can because you never know who. We'll see your research, we'll see all the see the stuff you're doing and be like, oh, okay, I, I think I like what this guy's doing. Let me give him an opportunity or let me collaborate with him. So put yourself at, out there as much as you can. I mean, the worst the worst thing that can happen to you is say someone say, Oh no, I'm not gonna no. work with you or you get a rejection. So yeah. Yeah. That's what I always tell people and myself. I mean, I'm like, the worst is no, right? And no, it's not going to do anything to you. So you just have to keep um, trying. So did you connect to like anybody working at the World Bank, probably on LinkedIn or anywhere? Before? No, surprisingly, I did not connect with any, I did not connect with anybody. Um, before the program, I didn't, I didn't really know it. I, I mean, I, I knew somebody, I knew a couple of people who worked there, but they were not like my friends or anything like that. Um, but yeah, once I got to the program, you get um, you get exposed. There's a whole network of, of um, people, fellows, previous fellows who are now doing great things in several organizations all over the world. You get exposed to, um, to all those people. You get to meet a lot of people. You make a lot of friends, you know, and... and networks connections that um, will help you along the line so yeah it's a it's a fantastic program and it will open so many doors for for you as well it, it did for me so i'm probably sure it will do for um anybody else so you just gotta um take the chances do what you gotta do and if it works out for you take advantage of it as much as you can yeah thank you so i know like the essays are really important um components of the whole application thing um what are some of the things you can tell people to do in order like to prepare very well to put together like very good essays all right so that's, that's going back to what i said your your research or what you're about to um, because it's a learning program, right? It's, you're going to learn. It's, the, it's a capacity building program, which means you're going to learn, but also they expect that you contribute to the work of the World Bank, right? And mm -hmm. whatever you contribute has to be in line with their objectives, right? So I would say in order to write a good essay, your essay or the, your what you intend to bring on board has to be in, in line with what they do, what the World Bank does so go on to their website see their current projects they are read they are working on and like you know read about it and see okay how is my which research am i in access of which research am i currently doing how how does how do those research um um the studies i'm doing how do they align with what the world might currently doing in developing countries you know what can i bring on board so i would say one go on to the world bank um website they have so many research uh, programs they are doing google like you know maybe if you're working on adolescents and um, malnutrition in in ghana or whatever zimbabwe like google that in the world bank's search engine and like see what papers come around come up like just read those and ask yourself which research am i doing and that's where you start so your 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 research has to align with the objective that's that's key right mm -hmm. um yeah yeah thank you that's interesting and i'm kind of 
<laughs> taking you back to um you did mention that they have this job something where you kind of like upload um i don't know if it's your cv or something would you like to like elaborate on that yeah so the world bank has this thing called um and i I'm, i might not get the name right but it's, it's mm-hmm. like a job market candidate um so every like um not like it's not a competition per se right so it's like um doing the econ job market usually it's for econ students doing the econ job market um season which is probably i don't know probably like from may or april to like august or something right they have um they are they make you like they allow people to send their research papers like what you what you are working on what you call your job market paper so you submit that to um to their webs to their they have a, a committee that reads and they'll read your work and say okay is this like a good paper so i think every year they probably select between 15 to 20 papers all all over the world like not just the us all over the world so that's one of the things i want to encourage people like in in, in back home in africa like if you are in ghana doing a phd or something you should definitely apply you might you know you you'll be surprised your not that you'll be so i shouldn't say you'll be surprised your research is probably very good because you are doing work that's on the ground right mm-hmm. so apply um to all those things and uh put just put yourself out there so that's that is not that's not an african um fellowship or anything it's, mm-hmm. it's a job market paper that everybody applies to but i did that because i i wanted to put myself out there right okay. so that is a way of putting yourself out there and um seeing yeah so it's a job market paper. it's every year they do it every year uh, you can look at you can look it up i think it's called a world bank job market paper or something and for like people who are not yet candidates since with this um job market thing like when you upload your paper you would receive feedback would you advise people who are not yet candidates to probably like just give it a try just um to see what some um, feedback they would get on their papers so it's just for people who are ready to like get jobs or people who are ready to apply for jobs i uh, i mean i mean for that particular job market paper thing i would not <laughs> I would not advise you to do it if you're not ready, like if you're not actually on the job market because it's a job market, yeah, you know, yeah, it's a job market. You need to be ready before you actually get on the job market paper, yeah. right? So um, what you can do is before years, so let's say maybe you're in your second year PhD, right? You're going to maybe, you, I don't know, you want to get down in your third year, fourth year, everybody fifth year, whatever year you want to sit here, whatever year you want to finish, right? You have an objective, okay? So you know I'm going to finish in my fourth year. So if you know you're going to finish in your fourth year and you're in your second year, what you can do is to go onto that website, go on to like, you know, just be reading and you're interested in working at the World Bank, for instance, like go onto that website, read some of the job market papers, like see what they are doing. They have job market papers from several years back that are still on the mm-hmm. website. So read those things. It will be help you to shape some of your research questions to help you to like, you know, you know, design your research questions well and have a good paper. So that when you're finally you're you are there, you know, in your fourth year, you have a solid uh, research to present, a research paper to present that will actually, you know, get the attention that you, you, you need or you deserve. Great, yeah, thank you. So um, in order to end like this conversation, what pieces of advice would you give to someone who wants to apply? I know you've already given like so many um, advice, but um, maybe can you leave us like three pieces of advice um, for people who would want to apply for this um, fellowship? Yeah, I mean, first of all, give it a shot if you think it's something you want to do. I mean, the worst case scenario is that they don't they don't select you and you don't lose anything from that. Um, make sure if you want to apply, make sure that you go onto the World Bank website, read, you know, they are, they are it's like you, if you want to sell something to somebody, you better make sure this person will be interested in, in what you're about to sell to them, right? So read, read go onto the website, read like the current projects they are working on and, um, and, and try to, you know, if you have to write a statement of papers, make sure it's, it aligns with what you are doing. But guess what? You can't fake it, right? That's why it's like our advice that you plan ahead, right? You can't, you can't force your... Re- if you're in your fourth year and you have to apply for that thing right now, you can't, you can't change your whole research just to align with the World Bank's current um, uh, research just so that you can get into the program. So I think for younger, for those one like, you know, their first year, second years, you know, third year even, and you're still like, 
develop your research questions and stuff. If if this is a goal, if this is something a program you want to be in in the in the long run, you should be reading about stuff like that and designing your research questions in in a way that aligns with with the what the World Bank is doing. But my final advice is that don't you know do things that will bring you joy, do things that you are really interested in, not because you want to get into some program, you know, and yeah. and let the rest play out for you. Yeah, that's really important. Um, thank you so much, Dr. Ofori, and like thank you for sharing all these tips with us. Yeah. Um, and thanks to everyone who is watching this video. Um, I really appreciate you watching my video. But again, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'll be sharing more um, fellowship tips. So um, make sure you subscribe to this channel. So thank you all once again for watching. And I'll see you all next time. Bye.